I still feel that building tools as rubbers of existing APIs um, feels intuitive to me. Like I agree that the user is ultimately not like a human is not the user of uh, LLM tool, um, but it, it's a machine. Why not an API? Like at the end of the day, APIs are designed to be used by applications. Why is this approach not working? Yeah, I, I cringe every time I just see an API wrapper and it's called a tool. Uh, because if you think about how these API endpoints are written, they're written with the assumption that the downstream consumer is going to have some type of intricate and robust system put in place to process and validate and even handle like complex responses. So if you simply just wrap an API endpoint, you're just putting all of that work on the language model. And with something that's non-deterministic, it's not always the best idea. So you might enable a language model to be able to take a new action by giving it just an API wrapper, but it's going to fail like half the time. Some, some examples that I've run into is, so I have two for you. One is uh, the post-processing. So after you hit the API endpoint, how do you provide that response to the language model? So if the API endpoint, which they commonly do, returns some deeply nested uh, dictionary that like maybe is representing some kind of tree structure of your file structure, like how, how are you going to make sure that the language model correctly understands that? Um, or if the API endpoints returning this deeply structure, deeply nested uh, structure, just to represent uh, like the content on a, on a page, how are you going to ensure that the language model presents this information to the end user correctly? And the solution for that is write deterministic code that converts it into Markdown. For example, um, we you know we've been able to do this for decades. Let's continue to do it. Uh, let's just not forget how to write code just because a language model can automate some of the uh, things that can't be expressed programmatically. Uh, another example is if we take the Slack API, uh, it loves to rely on user IDs. But if I want a language model to send a DM to you, Mateo, on Slack, I'm not going to say send a DM to user 9644282. I'm going to say send, send a DM to Mateo. And so that requires this machine experience engineering to have a tool that takes a username as input or an email as input and programmatically figure out what is the corresponding user ID that we can then provide to the API. Yeah, and, and you also will, will have an issue that Slack does not offer an endpoint to convert a username to an ID. So you, you're not able to search the user by its name. So the LLM has to figure, it's, it's going to look for an endpoint like that. It's not going to find one because Slack, the Slack API does not offer it. So the LLM has to reason on the fly that it needs to use the least user's endpoints and then uh, get a list of all the users. If it's a large workspace, Slack is only going to return like a, a small subset of it in the first page. So the LLM is going to have to figure out that it needs to paginate the next pages until it finds the user with the correct name. And then maybe by that time, when they reach the, 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 the page that contains the user ID, maybe there is so much data already in the LLM context that they're going to they're gonna confuse what is actually the user that they need. They, they, might, they, they will be more prone to even select the wrong user, get the wrong user ID, and send the message to the wrong person. So, and, and since this is a programmable and repeatable task, it makes a lot more sense to code it in a tool because it's, it's always cheaper and faster to execute a tool than to have an LLM reasoning all this stuff every single time someone asks to send a Slack DM. So I think that example that Eric raised is a very good one that uh, highlights how APIs are not definitely not tailored for LLMs. And when, when we have human engineering creating integrations with the Slack API, and it's, it's, it's also valid for every single third-party uh, 
API service out there on the internet. So when, when human engineers uh, are going to create an integration, they have like days or weeks to plan the integration and to understand which endpoints they need to call, uh, how they're going to handle possible failure modes for each endpoint. So it's, it's, very, it's a very thought out process. And, and now, if, if we expose those same API endpoints uh, as wrappers of uh, our tools for LLMs, and we ask them to reason all this stuff in like under a second, and also consume the integration <laughs> that they just cut out, it, it's, not, it's just not going to work well, like uh, not reliably well. Uh, they might get it right sometimes, but they will get it wrong a lot of times. And the agents that rely, rely on such tools will be very unreliable as a result. And we will end up actually being kind of useless. Um, and, and I think one other issue with exposing traditional HTTP and API endpoints to LLMs is that those APIs give a lot of freedom that in some contexts, we do not want to expose to the LLMs because when the API is implemented, the developers implemented the API, take the assumption that a human engineer is going to consume them. So they kind of outsource some responsibility for those engineers consuming the API to use it responsibly and reasonably. But we cannot expect an LLM to be as reasonable and consequential as a human because they make very silly mistakes sometimes they they prove to be very inconsequential at times as well they can be very goodable so it's very dangerous to expose api endpoints like entirely without any guardrails to LLMs to call yeah i mean language models don't take responsibility at the end of the day it's the engineer it's us that has to take on that responsibility so yeah it's our responsibility to responsibly design these tools. Yeah. Also about what Eric said before, I think there is a mismatch, a very big mismatch between API data models and chat interface data models. So when, when a human is interacting with an LLM on a chat interface, it has this kind of uh, particular data model. Like Eric said, send a DM to Matteo. So the data model is about is, is human centric, uh, but when we look at APIs uh, data models, it's it's not human centric. So it's more uh, system centric. It's centric to the Slack system, you know, uh, and how Slack is implemented behind the scenes. Uh, it's heavily influenced by that. So when LLMs have to navigate those differences, is where where they fail uh, very often. So our job as uh, tool developers is to create tools with interfaces that match as closely as possible to the chat interface data model. So that if the LLM has a username to send a DM, the tool accepts a username and not a user ID. Uh, so the tool may accept a user ID as well, but it gives the LLM the ability to call the tool with a username without the ID. So that's, that's one very important aspect of uh, machine experience engineering that is completely missed when you simply wrap API, API endpoints as tools. Renato, I'm curious how that argument stands when maybe you have something like an ambient agent where uh, the process isn't necessarily kicked off by a user saying, send Mateo a message. Yeah, so uh, an ambient agent will be probably ingesting data from one or multiple sources and making decisions on the fly. But at least part of this data model is going to be human-centric because the, the, the ambient agent will be prompted by someone. It's not, it's not like we have these completely auto autonomous machines. If, if we had those, we would be in the matrix, right? <laughs> like <laughs> machines that uh, do not take any uh, requirements or, or, or tasks by humans. They just simply make their own minds out of the blue and start doing stuff without any connection whatsoever to humans. Uh, so since we still do not live in the matrix, Every LLM is going to be taking orders or requests from a human. 
uh, at least partly. And if, if, if it's not the case at some point, we're, we're going to have bigger issues with handling the matrix. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. It's prompts all the way down. Yeah. 